Hello everyone, the 316 LEGO Maniac 316 here with my first DC Multiverse McFarlane Toys action figure review. And this is Peacemaker from the King Shark Suicide Squad Build-A-Figure Wave, which retailed for $24.99. I found this guy at a local store for only 20 bucks though, so if you find him on sale, might as well pick him up. So, this is my first uh, McFarlane DC Multiverse figure. And, uh, like I said, it was on sale, so I'm like, I'm going to pick it up. I wanted to get into a little bit of these figures for some time now. I absolutely love that King Shark build a figure, and I want to get him. So, you got to get the individual figures to get the big fig. Because the Walmart exclusive version has blood on it, and I'm not about that. So, Peacemaker, here he is. So, I want to start off with just a size c comparison, because I think... When you have it in hand, you feel the presence, but without something to compare it to on screen, it doesn't really translate well. So I got some Lightning Collection figure here. I'm going to put him right next to him. I mean, just look at the size difference. Like, all of the Rangers are six inches tall, pretty much on the dot, but like, Peacemaker here, he's nearing like the seven and three quarters mark, nearly eight inches tall. It's crazy. So. There's a good size comparison for you. Let's also show off another size comparison with a McFarlane figure I got 10 years ago. This was from the Halo Combat Evolved 10 year anniversary. Silver Master Chief. There he is. And he's only five and a half inches tall, but yeah, the difference 10 years of figure uh, production makes, you know, a lot of new advancements, a lot of changes. But yeah, there's a there's a good size comparison between the two of them. And just to show you, he's like about five and a half inches tall. Yeah, I finally got my ruler out so I can use that for videos now. Anyway, so here he is. And let's see what he comes with. So every McFarlane DC Multiverse figure comes with a stand. It has DC Tampa Graft on it. Nothing special, but... It's really nice that these come with stands because I had to buy separate stands for them. I used the uh, NECA stands for like the female figures because they can't stand on their own. And every figure also comes with a card. So this one is Peacemaker for the Suicide Squad. If you guys want to read that, go ahead. One thing I want to point out, though, is that right here, Peacemaker is a world-class marksman. And you want to know what? You, you want to know why that bugs me? Because they give him a sword. That's his only accessory, a sword. It's a nice sword, don't get me wrong. It has his like little bird on it. Again, really nice sword. But does he ever use this in the movie? No, not that I remember. <laughs> they, 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 they give a marksman a sword. I... Anyway... So this is a build of figure wave and he comes with King Shark's arms and these things are huge like so you saw how tall he was if I pull the peg all the way up look how big that arm is it's crazy and on the front of the box here it does say it's their biggest build of figure as of the time of when it was made so obviously him not having guns is a bit of an issue for me but I can get past it but then you notice both of his hands are trigger finger hands. Yeah, they're, they're not grabby hands, they're trigger finger hands. They give a marksman a sword and hands to hold guns, but no guns. Apparently Warner Brothers was like, we can't, we can't have action figures with guns because that's too violent. And yet you give him a sword? It's just... <sighs> Sorry about that little rant. It's just, it, it really bugs me. Like... <sighs> It's not going to offend anyone. Like It's not violent. Action figures do not promote violence. Anyway, enough of the rant. He can't hold the sword, though, thankfully. It doesn't want to come out, and it just comes out pretty easily when you to want to get it out. It's a sword. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the figure itself, and let's start off with the face. Do you guys think that looks like John Cena? In person, I think it looks a lot nicer. Like There's just something about it that really pops, but it, it definitely evokes the feeling of Cena. And then here's his torso, 
and I just absolutely love this texturing. It's very nice. It, if you ever had one of those Pokemon cards that has texturing on it, that's what it reminds me of. It's just very nice. There, if you could, oh, let me bring it to the mic so you can hear it. Yeah. So that that's probably like the best thing about these this figure at least is that the texturing is just gorgeous. It, it looks nice. It feels nice on the fingers. It's not going to rub off. This is made of rubber, though. So if you can see, I'm trying to get it into focus here. But, yeah, actually, this would be easiest to do. Just trying to focus on the box in the back. But you can see it's made of rubber. So it's a little flexible. But there is a plastic piece in there for the waist articulation. So you can still twist it here. But you can also twist it in his upper joint as well. It does get in the way slightly, but not enough to warrant, you know, cutting up the rubber. See, he can still bend forward pretty far. It's not bad, but could be better. And every McFarlane figure, as far as I know, has some kind of rubber crotch because they have their own custom built system in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see in here. Camera's having a hard time focusing today. Not sure why. It's like as soon as I get it close to the camera. Okay, yeah, you can't see in there. But essentially, this this whole crotch piece is all rubber. So that's rubber too, and that's rubber. I think they do that to make it look less like a toy. But then you have this situation going on, and it just kind of throws off that whole point. But yeah, very nice texturing again. Here's the pants. Again, just really nice. It, it looks like it's actually just they took the fabric from the costume and then, you know, like you would do with clay, they would just stamp it on. It's very nice. Very well done. And then you have the boots, which I'm not too big a fan of how they did the ball joint there, but it's still got plenty of range of movement. It's also got a toe bend. And obviously that looks weird, but he can stand up by his own. You don't need the stand, but if you wanted to put the stand on, Here's the peg, there's the hole, eh. and that just pegs in like that. And you can stand. Very nice. Anyway, so let's go over articulation since this is my first one. Uh, any future figures I do of this, I will only show differences. So let's, let's start off with the head. So the head is on a barbell joint, if you can see in there. Kind of hard to see, but there's a ball socket down here and there's a ball socket up here so you can you have pretty much like a full range of motion not just 360 but like he can go up pretty far down pretty far and he's got a really really nice head tilt you know looking like a chantress here we move on to the upper torso I already showed you that the upper part can spin but also the lower part can spin although the lower parts a little harder to spin he does have like that weird butterfly joint it's essentially just an inserted piece of plastic, but you see the little outline in there. But yeah, he can go forward with it that far and backward that far. Sorry about the camera focusing issues. I think it has to do with uh, the the light here. Might actually be the box. Let me get the box out of the way. That might help. I guess not. Oh well. I'll just keep him out this far. Sorry about that. Anyway, he does have a up. He can go up pretty high. And that does spin 360. One thing I would like to point out though is that that's a black joint in there and I wish that was red, but meh. He does have forearm spin. Double jointed elbow, but uh, the issue I have with it is that that just does not look right. How is he going to do an elbow from the top rope? It's not his move, I know. I'm sorry about the camera not focusing. It usually is not this bad. Anyway. So down in the uh, hips here, you can go out about that far. And as you can see, it's its own custom joint. It's not like a ball. So you can pull it forward, but because of the diaper in there it does bend the plastic in the diaper and it's not a perfectly good straight mm. he does have double jointed knees these fare a little bit better than the uh, elbows it doesn't really feel like the sculpt is breaking too poorly 
if the camera decides to ever focus. There we go. Sorry about these unfocused shots again. Not sure why camera's bugging me today. And then as you can see, he's got a back and forward. Toe bend I already showed you. Full 360 in the knee though. Or not the knee, the ankle. Sorry about that. But yeah, pretty good articulation. Let's go ahead and take a look at the box. So on the box here, it's nothing really special. It's a huge box though. I want to compare it to a lightning collection box just to give you an idea how big it is. So as you can see, there's the size difference. Like it's at least an inch or two taller and like three inches wider. But this also has the build of figure parts in there, so it makes sense why this is a big box. They're not usually this big, but thought I'd give you a little uh, so, uh, frame of reference. It says Peacemaker, Suicide Squad. There's the uh, movie logo up top there. McFarlane Toys. Eh, on this side, it just says Peacemaker, DC Multiverse up here. Eh, here's the back of the figure. As you can see, this is figure three of four that you need to build King Shark. And, oh yeah, there was one other thing I wanted to point out. So first of all, he has his logo here up on his helmet, but not on the figure. It's missing. So I wish that was there. And also you can see he's got like a bit of an ammo pouch on his belt. He doesn't have it here, but honestly that's something that I really don't care that's missing. It's really not that noticeable. So yeah, that, that's just two things I noticed when looking at the uh, picture of this figure that I forgot to mention. But yeah, so... The other three figures, uh, Harley Quinn, Bloodsport, and Polka Dot Man come with the other three parts, or rather, the other parts, because they each have two except Harley. She's just got the entire legs. And then here's the bottom of the box, just a bunch of legalese. It says barcode. And lastly, up here, you got the McFarlane toys, and then it just shows how many points of articulation you got. All right. So. What do you guys think of this line? Uh, this is my first figure. Are there any other figures you'd like to see me review? I'll definitely try to pick up the rest of these figures, especially if they're on sale for 20 bucks each. But again, uh, biggest complaints, weird elbows. Not a big fan of the rubberized uh, crotch area because it makes range of motion a little bit difficult. No thigh swivel, not too big a deal for me. It is, I, I got spoiled by these, I'm just saying, you know. No alternate head, but there is a, uh, I think it's a Target exclusive one where it's an unmasked version, but I don't think it looks anything like John Cena. I prefer the helmeted version. This one just looks really gorgeous, the way the light bounces off the helmet. Even though it's not as shiny as it is in the film, it's still really nice. And I definitely like this figure, and it has its issues, as I pointed out. But yeah, I'd recommend it, totally. Um... So yeah, stay tuned. I'll try to bring out reviews of the other three once I get my hands on them. I know these figures are a few months old, but I thought I'd get a video out. Anyway, so thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. Be sure to like, comment, hit the bell, and subscribe. Peace.